Gotcha. All right. All right. Um, so probably taking a ship, aren't we, near the coast? Uh, yeah, you guys are near the coast. Um, we're um, on a river uh, here, but you probably could if you wanted to uh, uh, talk with the shipmate down at the um, down at the uh, um, uh, the docks on the other side. I have a map here. Let me pull it up. Yeah, I think it's the fastest way, wouldn't you, wouldn't you guys? Yeah. Yeah, we have enough gold too, so. All right, sounds good. So um, you guys kind of go down to the uh, down to the uh, docks over there and are um, kind of walking through. And you see a lot of the boats are, are pretty small, kind of river boats. You know, there's a couple that probably would be pretty seaworthy. Um, and um, you guys see a big sign that says uh, the floating wharf. And that's a that's a ship or a shipping company. Um, uh, not quite sure to be honest. All right. Um, I think what we'll look oh, it's a comp it's a board, it's a building, it's a building. Sorry, yeah, right on the okay. wharf. Okay. Um, we'll uh, I'll meander in there and see about uh, um, what they know about ships that are uh, running uh, uh north north. I think it's north up there to Waterdeep. Ah, uh -huh, yep, it's um, north. You're right. As in the next, uh, whatever, and what they, uh, whether they be taking uh, passengers. Sounds good. So you guys uh, kind of walk in, and you see this um, uh, older guy, uh, kind of, kind of a, a fit guy, but you know, in his in his later years, um, kind of standing behind the uh, desk. He's he's tying a bunch of ropes and uh, putting together. Um, you know, kind of this, uh, kind of a buoy type thing that would float in the water with this wooden thing. And he's kind of tying, looks like he's, uh, you know, got real thick skin and, uh, uh definitely looks like he's lived on the water for a while. And, uh, it's kind of sees you guys walk in and, uh, says, he says, what do you lot want? We're looking for some, uh, uh, passage, uh, north to Waterdeep, uh, trying to find out some information on when we can, uh, we can uh, find one that we can board on and and go up there preferably uh travel would i would imagine it would be faster than uh on land so he um he kind of uh nods and, and kind of looks around he says um water deep's pretty far uh not that far it's like it's gonna it's gonna cost some money uh kind of looks around he says um Let's say uh, that's up there. You guys going to need trips back, too, or no? No, we're not worried about that right now. So it's a one-time trip, so that's going to be uh, two gold per person um, per day. Uh, so we're looking at uh, four days, so uh, what is that? What do we got? Uh, that's eight. Uh, I don't know. Somebody figure out the math, but, yeah, that's what it'll be. Sounds like, um, hmm, uh, how many days are you saying it takes to get there? Well, I think it takes four days, about four days last time I went. Adults. Hmm, how about, uh, we make a deal here? All right. Uh, we're talking two times four is eight times four is 16. Uh, it's two gold a day for the, uh, little lizard guy, too. That's part. That's the deal that we won't deal because uh, we'll be feeding him and he'll be. Uh, he's uh, protected. So for sixteen, we'll uh, we'll uh, take the deal. He kind of stands up and he shakes your hand and. I'm mean, uh, more than happy to help you fish and and uh, and uh, we'll protect the ship as well. He's like, all right, all right, sounds good. He says, uh, the uh, my ship's name's Harkness, and uh, it'll uh, it'll it'll carry. Let's see, kind of one, two, kind of counts. Oh yeah, plenty of room. We got lots of room. So uh, it's in the back if you guys want to load up your gear. Um, you don't have anything else, do you? you? Can't take your horses. Sorry. If you got any. Yeah. Kind of ship is this that you're looking at? Uh, it's taking a, up north there. It's a beauty ship. It's a beauty. It's a sailboat. It's got a sail on it. A sailboat with a Why? sail. How about how about I go look and see if I can find a larger ship with a few more mates aboard that uh, 
and make the better speed than than you can uh, have an arrest during the night, and you're the only one that can manage the ship. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Durskin kind of shrugs his shoulder and goes back to tying a rope. He's like, "All right. Good luck." <clears throat> All right. So we'll uh, go looking around and see what kind of ships are out there at the dock, and and find and try and gather some information on uh, on uh, information on what might be traveling to the north. Sure. So um, you guys kind of go out there, and unfortunately, you know, the Daggerford doesn't have much travel anymore. And um, you guys kind of look around, and you see uh, two boats that are essentially in the harbor. Uh, one of them is a uh, kind of a ferry, a little dinghy. Um, and uh, you guys walk by, and it smells like urine, and, and uh, you see, like, um, you know, kind of bugs crawling across the deck and whatnot. And looks pretty rough to be honest with you um and then you see another boat which is the uh quote sailboat end quote uh that he had uh, uh told you about it's got a small little room um that probably would sleep like three or four to be honest with you and um it's about a 10-man sailboat so it's probably maybe mm, 25 30 feet uh, probably in length and that's all you guys see for boats so this is a river boat sort of deal, not a... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a small boat. He's, he told you he could manage it in the sea, but uh, it's uh, definitely something that would be a little hairy on, uh, on open waters, you think. Yeah, I'm not really interested in that. Maybe we should just keep the horses and do it on foot. Yeah, I think so. I don't. I really don't want to be out to sea in a freaking little rafty, whatever, rafty crafty. You see uh, Durskin kind of coming out, and he's chewing on a, a, a piece of wood that uh, peeled, probably peeled off something. And he's like, "So that's the boat, guys. Let's go. Hop in." No, nah, I think we're gonna, nah. we're gonna take our horses and we'll ride out. He kind of shakes nah. his head and it's like, "All right, whatever you guys want to do." All right, thanks. Have yeah, a good one. you too. He goes back in, <laughs> kind of all dejected, sort of. All right, so we need to get some rations for the road and uh, slap them into some saddlebags. And... All right, sounds good. So you guys, you guys have been to a couple places here. There's the general store um, that uh, has stuff that's got tag, and he sold you guys a bunch of the mining uh, stuff that you guys had uh, kind of had before. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, sir. So uh, you guys kind of walk over there and... Uh, you see Taggin sitting, uh, he's that, that guy, he's kind of sitting back there, and he's like, oh my goodness, it's the guys that are famous in this town. Kind of throws a big smile. And we all strike a pose as we walk in looking like the astronauts, famous astronauts, walking down the road. <laughs> are we walking in slow we walk, motion? We do our little slow motion walk. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, yeah, you guys kind of have a, a slight wind blowing through your hair, and the wind's sort of pushing it back, and, you know, spotlights come on. So he, uh, hum going on behind it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. He, um, he, uh, he says, what do you guys need today? We're going to need some uh, horse feed. Um, I don't know. Do we want to get a, a mule or another horse, pack horse, just to carry the whatever besides our own, our own horses we're riding, or? We want to just put it in our deal. Well, we might want a horse for the lizard. Oh, he can't ride, he can't ride that thing? <laughs> what was that? He runs faster than the horse. Oh, there you go. So he'll run faster than the horse. Okay. Oh, so you, you, ride, you do ride him or whatever? No. <laughs> He's smaller. He's a dog size. Okay. Yeah, he's a small creature. Sorry, guys. He's not huge. I'm going to AFK here for a minute. and uh, Sure. Uh, get my daughter tucked in and cuddle with her, so I'll be gone about five minutes. All right, no problem. So, um, so you guys uh, get um, uh, your rations. You guys get the... Uh, the food and um, uh, the uh, horse stuff, and he kind of says, "I hope you guys don't have anything to sell to me because I still haven't made enough money to uh, sell off the stuff you guys sold me last time." No, we're uh, we're heading to a bigger town, so we can sell there. 
So he, he kind of uh, kind of smiles and sort of shakes his, politely shakes his head and, and kind of holds up his hands and says, your business is your business, kind of says with a smile. He's like, I, I don't want to know anything about it. So uh, he gets you guys the stuff and uh, uh, kind of some uh, rations. Uh, how much rations do you guys want for the week? Just, I'm sorry, just a week or? Yeah, weeks worth for each, I guess. Okay. Sounds good. So um, you guys get a, a week's worth of rations and um, uh, horse trail. I'll just take it out of the uh, the money that you guys have here. So um, that'll be yeah. That's good. That take it out of the inventory thing. All right. So. Um, he gets you the uh, the rations and everything, and uh, says, "Anything else you guys need?" We're good. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I think that's it. You're good. All right. Um. So as you guys are. Um, Coming out of the house, um, can I have perception checks? I'll give uh, I'll give Bose's. Get those out of the way, Corver. Yeah, every time. Oh man, you too, Batanner. Jeez. Yep. All right. So uh, as you guys come out, um, you guys notice um, there's a small uh, humanoid that's kind of uh, got his back sort of against the wall, acting, trying to act nonchalant on a building down the street, but um, doesn't appear that nonchalant, and it's kind of covered in a cloak. You can't really see him very well. He seems out of place, though. Like not a very good thief type of thing. <laughs> I'll hold my money pouch a little tighter. <laughs> Alrighty, sounds good. So you guys want to head down to uh, start on your way over to Water? Yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye on that little dude, I guess. Alrighty. Sure. So you guys uh, kind of head over to get your horses and stuff from the uh, the observatory, and um, you guys notice that um, he kind of trails behind you, sort of acting nonchalant, kind of kicking rocks and stuff, and um, but definitely follows you up to the road, going up to the observatory, that little road, but um, just kind of keeps watching you guys. Definitely seems out of place. So he's definitely watching us, we can tell? Yeah, he is. He's watching you guys and sort of following you guys. Is uh, is there like a... We're going through streets and stuff, right? Yeah, you are. Do you, uh, I can bring up a map again so you guys can see it. But yeah, you guys were kind of going through, um, you know, streets. And remember, the houses aren't really, they're not like city houses where they're on top of each other. They're sort of spread out. So, but he kind of just sort of meanders through, kind of blends in with the, the minor folk that typically are traveling around and, um, you know, kind of in and out. But definitely, definitely you notice that he's following you already. Who's following the thief guy? Yeah, he's kind of following behind you guys, uh, keeping his distance, but definitely looks like he's uh, watching you guys. I guess we should just talk to him, huh? Sure. Are you guys just going to walk up to him? Yeah, see what he does. 
All right, so um, you guys kind of walk up towards him, and he sort of uh, kind of turns head both ways, and obviously the cloak's down over his face, but it's, you know, so, again, it's during the middle of the day, so he looks kind of silly with this cloak over his head and um, kind of shrugs up his shoulders and just sort of waits for you guys to walk over. walk over I guess. Alrighty, so you guys get pretty close. He's pretty short, probably maybe two, three feet in height. Um, and uh, he's just kind of standing there and um, you hear kind of a, a, a voice come out, kind of small sort of voice and he says, you got me. <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, <laughs> what are you doing little guy running around in your mom's bed sheet? <laughs> He kind, of, he kind of looks over at you and, and he says, he says, Tanner, you've been tipping the flask? Is that Tom? It's Tom. He throws back his uh, his cloak and you guys see sort of a blue little, uh, oh, I knew it was Tom. blue little dude kind of standing there. He smiles and smirks and uh, says, uh, he's like, uh, what are you guys doing? What are you up to? Hey, Tom. Mm. I can't sure. remember. Did this guy hose us last time or not? Because we like told him not to tell on us and I can't remember if he told us about the uh, bounty on our heads, if I remember right. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yep, he was sent by um, uh, Zalandra from the Emporium. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. You, you got any messages for us, Tom? Um, so Tom's like, uh, I don't have any messages, but I wanted to let you guys know that, um, uh, the bounty's still on your guys' head. Oh, okay, thanks. Has it increased at all? Uh, he kind of looks around, he says, well, now that Schmenk is in the clink and, uh, Raglan's gone, it's actually gone down. <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> so, well, let me tell you what we've been up to, you know, Worms and undead and all this other stuff. You need, to, you need to talk to these guys and get that thing raised again. So his eyes get really big as you tell him about these worms and whatnot. And um, he's kind of like, uh, 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 "Have you seen these worms recently?" And he's kind of like checking in underneath his arms and everything, kind of looking for worms. Uh, not, not, not in the last day or two. He kind of kind of puts out a big sigh and sort of rubs his arm across his forehead and like, whew! He's like, all right, good. Uh, he's like, um, what do I do to to get these guys to 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 get rid of the worms? I mean, is is do I take a, a potion? Sorry, it took me a minute. I had to find the picture. Uh, you gotta uh, get a. Cured by divine energy, but we haven't actually like cured anybody. Once you got him, you got him. He's uh, he kind of he kind of starts uh, kind of looking all nervous again and and whatnot, and um, finally he's like, oh boy, I hope I don't ever get him. So he's like, you'll take care of me, right, Tanner? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll smite into the Neverland if you get him. Is hey, that... yeah, I was joking about the bounty. Uh, can you not tell anybody you saw us? <laughs> He's like, oh, sure, sure. He kind of winks at you and sort of taps your shoulder, like, with his elbow. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, Tanner. No, to no problem, Tanner. I'll, I'll check my coin purse. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that his hand was sort of slipping into your, your coin purse. Silly Tom. <laughs> so he, he kind of looks over, and he's like, he's like, oh, Core's back. Core, you look different. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a new new friend. I'm not core. Oh, he kind of looks around. And he goes, "Oh my goodness!" And he sees your uh, uh, your dragon sitting there, and uh, he kind of hides behind Tanner Tanner's big cloak, and kind of peeks around the corner, kind of kind of kind of looking around, and um, he kind of whispers to Cor Cormer. He says, "He's got a lizard." <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pretty friendly too. Vago's like, "I'll take your word for it." Yep, yep, yep. He's like, all right, well, I got to get to the Emporium. I got, I got works to do. I got to uh, make lots of money. Uh, 
right. See you later, Tom. He kind of pats you guys on the back and uh, um, kind of goes over and sm sniffs the lizard a little bit and then uh, um, kind of kind of walks away. <laughs> Guess we'll head back on the road. Alrighty. So, um, how do you guys want to do? Was that guy? Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, he he, uh, he does like uh, tricks and acrobatic stuff at the uh, Emporium. He's like entertainment. I see. So um, the road that you guys are gonna be traveling obviously is a, a fairly busy road. I mean, it's the main main thorough. Th thoroughfare up to Waterdeep, which is obviously the largest city in the area. Um, but there are times where, um, you know, there may be small towns or villages that you pass, um, and it, it's a, it's a well-paved pa road, so you'll have no problem, not paved, but, you know, rock and, and whatnot. So you, you shouldn't have any trouble on traveling. Um, you guys know that it takes about, you know, three, four, five days to get there, depending on weather and, um, you know, your... Uh, you know how fast you guys push. Are you guys just going to do a regular march to the uh, to there? Are you guys going to kind of do a, a forced march? Uh, probably regular. I don't want to be rolling every hour. All right, sounds good. So, um, so you guys uh, kind of start out and um, you know are kind of traveling along the road and. Um, You know, you see that it's a, uh, a kind of a sunny day, um, pretty nice out, uh, not very uh, um, uh, very cool yet, and, uh, you know, it's kind of the uh, the wind's kind of blowing through, and you guys, um, you know, pass a couple caravans coming south uh, that don't really appear to be very, uh, very interested. They've got, you know, wagons and stuff, and, you know, um, kind of moving through, and if you guys ever want to stop or talk to anybody, you can let me know. Otherwise, we'll just keep moving through. And, uh, all right, so you guys get, uh, get, uh, to the end of the first day and, um, not really a town around anywhere. Don't really see any homes at all. It's kind of a, a, a wooded area and, um, you know, getting, getting close to nighttime. So, uh, I assume you guys want to do a camp. Yeah. All right, yeah. sounds good. Uh, who wants to, who, who's going to, yeah, who's going to pick the camping site? I suppose I would. All righty. Yeah. That sounds very appropriate. Uh, can you go ahead and give me a, a survival check, Razak? Just a sec. Sure, no problem. Go give me a second to get stuff here. Perfect. So you f you find a nice little cosp of trees that's over on the side. It actually seems to be kind of tucked away from the road and um, kind of sort of under over a hill and kind of underneath the knell, just enough where you guys can can kind of see over the hill and see the road um, and hear things, but far enough away that you think that nobody would be able to find you. Sounds good. So you guys uh, set up camp, and uh, I assume you're going to do watches like you always do. That's not about right. Yeah, alphabetical I'll order. take first. Okay, gotcha. Oh, you take the first one. Oh, wow. Switching it up. I like it. All right. I like a little challenge. All right, uh, so Cormer, you're going to take first watch? Yep. All right, so uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, spot or a spot check. Jeez, 3.5e. Here we go. Uh, perception. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, um, yep, you uh, make it through your watch without any issues. Uh, all right, and um, Tanner, I got yours. I'll get Bose here for a second. And, uh, let's see. I meant to roll it in the tower. I forgot to roll in the tower, too. Um, all right, so Bose makes it through his watch without any issue. Um, and then, let's see. Who is next? Razak, do you mind uh, giving me a uh, perception check for me, please? Thank you. Um, and so, um, you guys kind of get throughout the night without any issues. Um, kind of wake up and it's uh, unfortunately kind of a, a gray and rainy type of day today. It just started raining just before you guys woke up. You guys kind of make quick work of your camp and get back on the road. Um, and as you guys are um, 
Uh, about oh, a couple hours into your travels, um, you guys see another caravan coming down the street. Um, but this one looks a little bit different. Um, this one has two wagons that are in it. Typically, you've only seen one. And you see uh, four guys, uh, four short gentlemen. Um, they appear small humanoids on horses, uh, kind of surrounding the, uh, the wagons. And the wagons are covered. Uh, they continue to kind of sort of come towards you guys, and um, you see that actually they appear dwarven. Oh, sweet. Dwarven ale. So, uh, nice. Uh, Cormer, um, you recognize these guys as actually the dwarves that you guys had seen on the uh, trail heading to the hold when you guys were uh, heading out that way from uh, uh, from Daggerford. So. I'm going to ask them if they have any ale. Uh, so they, they sort of stop and kind of give the cursory, you know, glances and whatnot. And uh, all of a sudden you see the guy up on the on the cart just start laughing, this big bellowish laugh with his uh, beard sort of flapping against his belly. And he's like, he's like, guys, guys, this is the uh, the uh, the human that uh, that made uh, um, um, uh, Strongbeard kind of uh, pass out. And they all kind of laugh. And you see one of the, the dwarves on the on the uh, one of the horses kind of turns beet red underneath his beard. <clears throat> You guys got any ale? You want to play any games? <laughs> so he's like, uh, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got, we got ale. He's like, uh, we just came back from Waterdeep, and we're heading down, uh, to heading down to the hold to see if we can maybe uh, trade some more ale to those uh, poor little suckers down there. I mean, uh, uh, guys. <laughs> How, how's the road? Is it pretty good? Uh, he says, "Yeah, yep, yeah, not too bad. Uh, they're they're all getting ready. Uh, you know, Waterdeep is getting ready for the, uh, you know, for the fall festivities though. So there was a lot of traffic going north." <laughs> What's with the covered wagons? That's a lot of ale. <laughs> he kind of smiles back and uh, and says, "Yeah, the uh, um, the uh, dwarves in the uh, uh, northern uh, mountains they they had a uh, uh, what do you guys call it a bumper crop this year. So uh, so there's a lot of ale and there's a there's a really strong in there. It's called Dragon Spit. Whew, man, oh man, that's good stuff. I gotta try that." Oh, all right. He's like, yeah, 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 definitely. He's like, uh, come on over, come on over. So he kind of, uh, they pull over to the side and, uh, you know, they, they kind of get out a, uh, one of the barrels and uh, it appears half empty. They sort of set it on the ground and um, put a bunch of, uh, you know, um, um, uh, mugs on top of it. And um, they're like, all right, uh, you guys remember the drill? I think so. Uh, can you remind me? Yeah, sure. So he says, it's a, um, I have you guys, uh, um, you can either buy a drink uh, if you want to. And he says, if you're going to buy the Dragon Spit, it's uh, one gold piece because it's pretty powerful stuff. He says, if you want to bet and think you can put drink uh, drink under um, strong beard, then um, we put the money on the table and whoever wins the, uh, whoever, um, wins the bet gets to keep the money. Remember, it's the first guy that passes out loses. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll play against Strongbeard. <laughs> All righty. So you guys uh, throw uh, two uh, two coins on there. He's like, any other takers? He looks over to the uh, to you, Cormer. He's like, uh, you going to play or are you just going to buy a drink? I'm definitely in. Oh, excellent, excellent. So uh, he puts down a coin, and you hear, uh, you hear some rumblings behind you. Somebody mentioned something about uh, I, I, I put 50 silver, the, uh, the uh, thin guy goes down first. <laughs> he looks around, and he's like, anybody else want a drink? Well, I think I shall partake of this bet. This excellent, time. excellent. He's like, yeah, go ahead and put the coin up there. <laughs> Put it up there. Put it up there. So uh, he's, he's, he's going to come back. We're going to be all <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so he's all, he's all super excited and everything. And he goes, kind of kind of looks around and he goes, holy shit. Kind of looks back and he sees the, the um, um, uh, you know, Carl uh, kind of sitting over there right next to Razik. And he goes, Oh my God, Drugers be a blair! Holy tamole! What the hell is that? He's turned Scottish too, by the way. You see them all kind of fumbling with their swords, kind of pulling them out of the scabbards. Hey, easy, easy, easy. That's our pet. He's with the party. Hey, oh, they look uh, very uncomfortable. How about a uh, diplomacy check? He 
He's like, I don't know. That looks like something from the nine hells of, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I hear horse things. Oh, he made it back. He made it back. Okay. Alrighty. So, um. Hello. Nice. So, um. Alright, so they get kind of calmed down, um, you guys said easy, easy, and, uh, and they're sort of relaxed, so, um, and then they look over and they say, uh, is your, is your half-elven buddy gonna participate this time? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the, uh, uh Carl kind of goes over and snuggles up next to one of the dwarfs, and he looks uncomfortable initially, but then he's like, hey, it's friendly! <laughs> Hey, it's Mr. Blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got higher charisma than I do. He does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys want to get uh, bows caught up real quick here? Uh, Tom told us that uh, there's still a bounty okay. out for us. We ran into him. He was uh, hanging out in the bed sheet trying to be stealthy. And uh, I'll be right back. We ran into the same dwarves that uh, we had the drinking game with last time. And then, uh, me, Razik, and Korma are going to try to drink, uh, the dwarf under the table again. And Carl, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, and Carl. Uh, I'm back, sorry. Did our, uh, little friend, uh, leave, or is he still malingering around with us here? Uh, he left. He went back to the Emporium. Mr. Razor Teeth. Why don't you guys all give me perception checks just to make sure that he's not following you? <laughs> The quest. Here I am. All right, so uh, oops, I think uh, Razzy right needs one real quick. Razzy, Raz. All right, so uh, you guys are are confident that he's not following you. <laughs> Hear nothing, see nothing. It's nothing. Exactly. And then uh, you guys fill him in who these guys are that you met on the road. Yeah, yeah. And then Bose is the DD. Oh, he's a, he's a designated driver. <laughs> They all look uh, kind of disappointed. They're like, you know, those half elves. They can't. They can't hold their liquor. Nope. Nope. All right. So dragon spit. Okay. Uh, everybody got their gold. Yep. So so one gold a piece. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, he he calls down strong beard who, you know, kind of puffs up his chest and sort of looks like he's uh, you know really trying to show off. And he looks over to to Tanner and he's like. I've been practicing. Well, that's good. Maybe you won't go down first uh, on the first drink this time. He sort of glares at you, and he's like, drink. He kind of picks up uh, um, one of his flasks of the uh, dragon spit and kind of kind of throws it down, and all of a sudden he goes, <coughs> and sort of spit flies out of his mouth. And all the dwarfs laugh. They're like, that's why it's called dragon spit. <laughs> All right, um, so I need a 42 check, and uh, why don't we go ahead and um, we'll, uh, you can go ahead and roll that on the f on the thing here. <laughs> so uh, Tanner, you throw it back and uh, you know spit out a little bit as well, and um, you know kind of sprays out a little bit, and um, it kind of feels like a fire going down your throat, <laughs> nothing like you've ever had before. All right, Razik and uh, Cormer. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, same thing. Razik sort of drinks it down, and um, you know has no problem too. A little bit, kind of, a little bit, uh, kind of coughs out, and you feel it, kind of feeling real fiery as well. And Cormer, man, has no problem. He uh, he he throws it back down, and same thing. A uh, little bit more spit, but uh, definitely holds it down. And all the dwarfs cheer, and they're and one of them, the other guy says, "Man, oh man!" You know, behind you guys, you hear him say, "Here's your 50 silver." The other guy goes, "A double for nothing." And uh, the guy, the dwarf behind you guys, says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." The the uh, the the thin human's definitely going down this time. And uh, so they say, "All right, you guys ready to drink again?" Sure. All right, so everybody yeah, throws. I still have uh, I still have minus one constitution effect on my character from you, being poisoned. Is you that do. Still... It is still there. Yep. 
Uh, okay. Let me take let me take care of that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The doors kind of look. They go, no cheating, cleric. No cheating. <laughs> You're cheating. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just gotta fix him up a little bit. He got uh, hurt by some undead. Here, one of them in the back going, foul, foul. He's just like the drow, foul. Oh.